Hello everyone and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. We're so glad that you've joined us. We're going to be talking today about Civil War Technology Projects with Civil War Sally. Every Saturday we meet at the same time to talk about ways to use and engage students with technology. Our sessions are recorded and posted to the Live Classroom website at Live dot classroom two zero dot com and we're going to go ahead and jump right in and we'd like to see where everybody is joining us from so if you will click on the laser pointer which is the wand with the blue the blue wand with the red starburst and then put your location on the world map and I love seeing we have people from the United States, all, all the way over in Hawaii, Europe, Asia, and we're so glad, Canada, that you have joined us and that we have such a wonderful, diverse international audience. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for taking time to join us today. We're going to be answering some polling questions, and the polling responses are right next to the blue door. We'll be using the green check and the red X today. And our first polling question is, have your students ever participated in a traveling bear type of project? If they have, click the green check. And if they've not, click the red X. And the traveling bear projects are similar to Flat Stanley. Um, I know Sylvia uh, Polisano also does some projects using a Build a bear. So if you have, click the green check. And if you if your students have not the red X, let me go ahead and get those polling results. And it looks like we have about fifty two percent that have not done those types of projects and about eight percent have. So I think that's going to be fantastic for us to learn about since um, most of us aren't that familiar with it. And the next polling question is, are you responsible for teaching about the Civil War in your classroom? If you are, click the green check. And if you're not, click the red X. Um, in whichever country you happen to be teaching them at the moment, Shambles, take your pick. And I'm sure that lots of um, these ideas that Civil War Sally is going to share with us today will be applicable to all um, history and other content areas. Let me go ahead and get these results. And it looks like about 36% have not or do not teach the Civil War, and about 27% do. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and um, pass the wand over to Peggy to introduce our special guest. And I have taken over the wand. We have a really fun, interesting special guest on our show today. And I know you're going to love hearing about the fantastic way for students to create technology projects. Civil War Sally is not really Sarah Beagley, but she created this project. And her dad, Jim Beagley, are both here with us today. And they have become professional collaborators on teaching the Civil War. And that alone is a very exciting concept. I'll let them tell you about themselves and their backgrounds. But I'd like to tell you how I met Civil War Sally.
Many people ask us how we find our guests for the shows. We follow your leads and the feedback that you give us for suggested topics in the surveys each week. And then we all review our PLN contacts and personal experiences to try to select the people we think would have some great things to share with us on that selected topic. Well, I had the privilege of watching Sarah present about Civil War Sally last year at NEC Unplugged. We were streaming the event on Illuminate, but I got to watch her give her presentation in person, and it was such a treat. Everyone in the audience, including me, was so impressed that a sixth grader could not only organize this type of project, but could stand up there and deliver the presentation to a bunch of teachers and educators. We all left so inspired, not only wanting to get involved in our global project, but wanting to have our own students learn how to create a similar project to make their learning more engaging. I also got to see and hear both Sarah and Jim as part of a panel presentation on Steve Hargadon's Future of Education, where the guests were talking about the long tail in education and student and teacher authentic contributions. Well, we were all so impressed that Sarah and Jim took time out of their vacation to participate in the panel and even went to the extent of broadcasting their voices from the floor in the hallway of their hotel. Today, Sarah and her dad are going to share some of those tips and much more in their presentation. You'll not only get to see some great resources for teaching the Civil War from their sites, but also some great ideas for incorporating these kinds of technology projects into your curriculum. So thank you so much, Sarah and Jim, for joining us today. And I'm going to turn the microphone over to you and have you begin sharing with us. And we'll be starting with our newbie question, how can students get involved in creating and sharing technology activities that are interesting and fun? Take it away. Um. The answer to the newbie question is any student can take the subject they are passionate about and create a technology rich project. I have a passion for the Civil War, so I created Civil War Sally. And I'm going to explain how I did that. Civil War Sally is an educational follow me project. Civil War, I'm a student in St. Patrick's School in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I'm a sixth grade student, and last year I won first place at the PA State Middle School Computer Fair in the web page design category. And last year, when we were doing our Christmas program, I found out I won the EduBlog Award for Best Student Blog. I presented at BNC PA ECT Student Showcase, Civil War Preservation Trust, the National Council of Social Studies, and many others. Civil War Sally is a Donate Boyd's Bear who travels around looking for Civil War battlefields, museums, and schools learning about the Civil War. Her travels are similar to a Fat Stanley, and how she shares her travels are in our blog, Twitter, Flickr, and Plurk. What's in the bag is a manual to teach you how to do all that stuff. And I put. <laughs> hundreds of hours into it, and it's part of the Follow Me project. Sally has been to Andersonville Prison, Georgia, the Clara Barton Home in Glen Echo, Maryland, Richmond, Virginia, Fort Theater in Washington, D.C., and Bull Run. Um, I got to Ford Cedar by, they called my dad when I was doing the NECC student showcase, and they wanted Sally to come up in the booth where Lincoln was killed. And we, they actually, I tweeted that. And they also, um, like, I got to go up there with Sally. And it was pretty cool because it, it's like a one in a lifetime chance to actually 
go in there and look around in it because when you go up there in the winter time, you can't actually see. You can only look through how John Wilkes Booth would look through. And it was it was actually really cool. The Follow Me project supports the creation of traveling stuffed animals. They bring people together via Web 2.0 tools. The Follow Me project has a goal for 100 projects in a year. And we have 7 out of 100 so far. It's open to everyone, teachers, students, or families. And the link is www.followme.wikispaces.com. And some of my cousins are Pax, Morpheus, Fortuna, Geofrog, Leonardo the Lion, Beaker Boy Ben, Global Gorillas, and me. She's asking if it's one year. Maybe you can clarify that. She had asked about it being the name of the bear, so that's the confusion. So just explain that Sally is the name of your project. Sally is the name of my project. And how I created that name was. She, um, there was, at the Battle of Gettysburg, there was this dog named Sally Ann, and she would stay back and help the wounded. She was, she's 11 Pennsylvania mascot, and that's how I got the name. And how do you get started with your project? Name your, like, you have to name it. Talk to your class about the name. Like, I'll say later, I'll say this again later in the presentation, but put them into groups, have the groups come up with the name, then have the whole class vote on the names. And the purp what would the purpose be? A specific topic, like Civil War, like a, the Civil War? Or a general specific subject, like social studies? How is it going to travel? Classrooms, local, global. Yes, I've been trying to get other students to do the stuff like this, but they don't know what it is, so it's really hard to get them to do it. So, yeah, they could do the, the American you, Revolution. You guys could do the American Revolution. It can be anything you're really passionate about. How is it going to travel? Is it going to travel schools, classrooms, families, friends, states, country, local, or global? Um, I got the inspiration from Mr. Brandon Lutz. He is a teacher, a teacher in Philadelphia who created Morpheus Fortuna, the original colony project. But Sally's my idea. How you're going to actually get it started? Go to a local Build a Bear workshop, create an animal or creature, have a name, like, use the same name that your class chose. And if you don't have a Build-A-Bear near you, go to www.buildabear.com. Try and get one day to you. Um, so when we were down at the beach, we, we originally made a Build-A-Bear. When we went to go try and feel find clothes for it, we ended up going to Boyd's Bear. And we, we liked one outfit. So we talked to the manager, and he just donated the whole bear to us. And you can use any stuffed animal you like. How you're going to set up your web page? You can use, I used Blogster, which is an online poster. And 
they have an educational site now that you that the teachers can have like a main account, and then you can have all the student ones. edu.blogster.com. Then the wiki spaces is what I use like for my whole thing. Flickr is used to post pictures of where Sally's been, because well, I I will I w could never be able to travel to Andersonville Prison. So I'm seeing this through Sally. Blogger.com is where she blo posts her blogs about where she's been. Gmail. Twitter.com is where you can post pictures. One of the reasons why we, we chose Gmail is that um, so because it ties so closely to Blogger, so you don't have to have a multiple login. So if you did a word, you could use a WordPress press blog or some other service. But since Blogger and Gmail were tied so closely together, um, that's why we we went that route. And getting tricky with your wiki at wikispaces.com. I use that hat for the states competition. Like I use that to add the scrolling banner, the cluster map, and a bunch of other stuff. Oh, and Twitter, um I use that to like say if I'm Sally's like leaving or arriving or what she's doing. Like how you can connect with others. Skype, you can connect to teachers and others iChat um, is a Mac application, which my dad and I are on right now. We can connect with teachers and others. Google Video. You can use, again, you can either use Skype or Google Video to bring, you know, to connect you know, between classrooms or to connect the sub, um, um, a subject matter expert that may have your project back into your classroom, so it's really easy um, to to connect with these free applications, be it iChat or Skype or Google Video. Any one of those resources can bring it in. Like um, the, uh, I, I have to scroll up, but the person from Boston, I know that the, um, the one of the gentlemen at the National Constitution Center in Philadelphia will will Google Chat into your classroom if if you want to. Um, Deb. Uh, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll just very briefly. I'm. Um, I work for the Pennsylvania Department of Education in educational technology, and I have my I have my doctoral degree in instructional technology, and I studied how Pennsylvania teachers are using technology to teach the American Civil War. So that's that's sort of my background, Deb. So I'm going to turn it back over to um, to Sarah. Yes. Sally is available for Skype shows. Since, like, I, one when I was in school one time, I actually had to cut out of like music class to present. But I didn't mind that because it will help me get more people to sign up for Sally, which I want Sally to go to more classrooms. We actually really send the bear off. We have the, we have like a bear that's out in Reading right now, a visiting a cemetery, and we have like a stunt double back at home right with us right now because we travel to like Gettysburg and Antietam, so we can't have that Sally with us. So we have her backup. And ideas for teachers, it promotes student writing. Like I write on my dad's blog every now and then. And it's no, you need to be a little bit more specific about that. I'm having some of the highest rated hits on my blogs. So I've had I've had the highest rating hits on my dad's blog and I'm writing a lot better than I would write for my teachers. What the best thing I get out of this project is like meeting people from different places. It, that's the best part.
it's probably what they're passionate about to get them started. That's what made me get started. Not for computer fair. I just wanted to start it because I'm passionate about the Civil War. People don't know that much about the Civil War. And teachers don't use a lot of technology in the classroom, so I'm using a lot. They're using a lot more when Sally came. What inspired me to create this project was, um, like I said before, Morpheus Fortuna. And I, because my dad and I are very passionate about the Civil War, so I thought it would be a cool idea to help teachers use technology to teach the Civil War. It's it depends because for computer fair last year, um, I really didn't. I did it at home because the teachers in my old school didn't help. But for this year, they're gonna do a lot more help. They're gonna be helping a lot more. Does, how do you help students find their passion? Um, how do I? I don't know. I've thought I've met people from Australia, Ireland. It's yeah, I'm able to communicate with people from around the world. How to help like for students to find their passion, like if they're learning in the school in school and they actually find out what they like and they you're, they're learning about what they like. They like that, and then you can tell them, can you start, you, you want to start that. Um, at my old school, Flickr was blocked. My dad will tell you all that story later. And my dad will, t I'm going to hand the f microphone over to my dad to tell you that story. So, yeah, some of the sites so some of the sites were in fact blocked at her old school and but only the teachers had access to it and we actually um, had to work very closely with the teachers to say there with the administrators to say look this is a student created project and it's blocked and it makes absolutely no sense and we've gone to uh, a few schools to do presentations to do um, to do presentations and the sites are blocked and we're saying, look, this is a student created educational project that you know that has that allows your kids to do it in a safe way. So it, it's 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 getting us the inroads and allowing things to be unblocked in some cases. So it's working out in, in that manner. Okay. It it enhanced social studies and science lessons, like for the Civil War. If the road was like two feet wide, how many soldiers could march through? And like, if the body for science, like if the body is decaying on a battlefield and it rains, it how long would it take to decay? And it incorporates classroom to, to in, technology into the classroom. That's the big thing for me because teachers don't use a lot of technology and I think that it's really good to have technology to teach. Encourages group collaboration. I thought, like I said earlier, put your students in groups to think of the name and then have them vote on it. And then have each student have each, then put them in the same groups and have each student do the a different part of the website. And it creates unique opportunities for math. It um, shows that how much money you would need for it to ship, how many miles it traveled, like that. Internet safety. I'm protected by the username of Civil War Sally. And 
students will learn what people know safely, and nobody will know that they're a student. And it promotes digital citizenship. And it can, which means it helps them communicate like around the world, or at least across across the country. And only a few friends of my dad's and mine know that I'm at Civil War Sally. Other benefits. It improves writing skills. Like, they don't just write for the teacher. They're writing for, like, the whole world. It improves technology, technology skills. It means that, like, they're going to have better skills with it because they know what to do, and they're not going to send, like, nasty emails. They're going to write, they write better emails. And then it, it connects students with other students and teachers around the world. That was really, during NECC, I thought it was really cool to go to the, what was it, international, like the international meeting. That was the fun part because there you get to meet people from all across, all around the world, and actually get to tell them about your project. I met, pe like I said before, I met people from Australia, Ireland, and people that even live in this country that I haven't even met yet, like Kevin Honeycutt, who runs Art Snacks. And it allows your students to explore places they wouldn't normally see. Like I said, I would probably never go to the Claire Barton birthplace or Andersonville Prison, but I'm seeing that through the eyes of Sally. And teachers, and teach, and it teaches it, about other issues like copyright. Like I, for my rules, I asked Mr. Lutz about using his rules to post online, and that's how. I came up with the idea. And also, and also, um, I, I also asked my dad for the pictures and the background for this PowerPoint. And he said, sure. And that's, and at least you have permission to do it. And when I, if you go to my website, it's like Mr. Joe Corber let me use of the 119th New York Syndrome Corps, let me use his music for the background. Oh. For Whoopera, like, there's also something called Whoopera or Google Analytics. And Whoopera helps you see like how many people you've seen, how many people have hit your website. And where they're from. And what they're searching for to get to you. I'm always available to do presentations to Skype in. Um, I want to show my site. Can you help me, please? Not to look like I don't think. Um, when I'm done showing my website, my dad's gonna take it over and show him his web. He's gonna show his website. Um, on Skype, I'm at civil. I'm civil. Just civil war Sally. Let me check this real quick. Oh, no.
Sí. Hell no. Yes, I would like help. I think my dad got it. Uh, mine's blank. Let me try this. My oh, there it is. Can we get a thumbs up if everyone can see that, or a clapping hand, a smiley face? Okay. This is my site. Come, I use blogs there. The pictures which are coming up. They're coming up. And I, I used a uh, Library of Congress to get the pictures and uh, Picasso to, Peggy can't see it. Um, okay, see, like, this is what I used from, um, Mr. Lutz, and I just changed everything. Um, where I've been is I just like added where she's been so people don't gotta go to the sign up. And I also added Goog I added a Google map. And then for my blog I actually um I just did an RFS feed for my Blog. Mrs. Capazzoli from IU 15 at, her, in Pennsylvania. She um helps me do the RSS feed for my blog, and she helps me do a lot of stuff for my for check for the states. And here, her. URL is my dad's double checking. Web two guru dot wikispaces dot com and I don't get a lot of blogs every teacher's page. See, I just took this from my dad because in plus I asked permission. And um, so, like there are lesson plans, books, and a bunch of other stuff for teachers. And then for if your students want to look at this, if you also want to look at this, like Mrs. PTR Tracy, Mrs. B, she they had Sally for a first grade class. Uh, the link is for Mrs. Capizzoli, web 2 guru.wikispaces.com. And then they had Sally over President's Day and they learned about Abraham Lincoln. So, you don't have to be teaching about the Civil War. You just have to look at this. And then Mrs. Abernathy and her global gorillas used Flipigo. 
to create a movie, which is which is really cool. Guess what? This is this is probably my favorite part of my, out of my whole web like my whole website. Like, where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Um, like you can come in and sign my guest book. You just have to hit post. And Am I who's controlling my mouse? I've got my sponsors. My sponsors are Boyd's Bear, Country, Civil War and More, PAECC, or the Pennsylvania Association for Educational Computing and Technology, Knights of Columbus Council Number 121278, TJ Express Pet Supplies, and Net Tracker. Mm. And this where I'm going to right now is my sign up. Um if you can see that she has like a lot of openings. And that's when she comes home when we really don't want Sally home a lot this year now. So you guys can email me at civilwarsally dot com at gmail dot com. Um, how do you get sponsors? Is like you just look up help me out here. P A E C T was from P A E C T was from P and C, and I got recognized for that at the P A E C T banquet at N E C C. And friends, friends. My dad knew. Civil War more is here. The Civil War is and more is here locally. And then Mrs. Abernathy and Mrs. Blazowski, they just wanted Sally again. Yeah, she'd love to go to Arizona. I'm trying to keep her away from that Arkansas area. No offense to anybody that lives there, but she's been there a lot. Because if you look, where is it? She's been there to Jackson State Park, Prairie Grove Battlefield. Where? Was that the classroom? <laughs> and Pannenberg Elementary School. work. And here is my blog. It's coming up very slowly. <laughs> okay, it is here. Like I had to do a civil war I had to do a science fair project. It's required at my at our school. So I chose which hard tackle mode faster one in air or one in like a Civil War box. So I had all the information so I'm like, why don't I just write a blog post? And I did. And I even had like I even added how to make it. And then when we went to Gettysburg I added a lot. Like we took a lot of videos so I created Blog post. Can I do the David Kincaid? Yeah, it's not going to play over there, so. 
They can view it later. They can view you can view the movie, movies later. Um, I did. I just did a cross post to my dad on the Christmas. A really cool video would be the David Kincaid one, because he's a fame like uh, Irish music player. And then, as you can see, you can get a, a, ones from when I started. See, you can hit 2009, and you can continue from there. <laughs> Actually, I haven't eaten the hardtack because I had to let it mold and stuff. So that it's really fun actually doing that, making it because it helps me and anybody else who makes it or do it. Oh, for the computer for this year, since it is being sponsored, um, I'm going to do a multimedia, which hopefully I can at least make it to States again. Which I thought was really fun making it to States, hanging out at Dickinson College all day. Mm -hmm. That's the high school. And if you go to middleschoolcomputerfair.org, you can, I can take you there. Let us go do it. I want to. Oh, well. Yep, and this was from last year. That's last year's. This is last year's graphic winner. I'd like it to the winners. Results. And as you can see, if you can see it. I am they're still seeing the blog. Maybe you have to do it. <laughs> Dang it. Thanks. You're he's control my dad's controlling everything. Down we go. Is it and you can see this is for the states. And like I'm from IU fifteen, so if you go up and look you can see cat and the gra graphic design somebody else won. And I also won. So I'm gonna hand my the microphone. Oh, do you want me to use the web tour? Okay. Now I'm gonna hand the microphone over to my dad to let him talk a little bit about his website. So Sarah asked me to, and Peggy asked me to take a minute or two to talk about, you know, some other ways that you can use. Um, technology to teach the Civil War, it's not really hard to do. Um, I have a, a few, my, my wiki is listed here and I have lots of resources on my wiki on how to do, you know, just resources on how to access different things, but it's so easy um, to do that it, it doesn't require a lot of technology. A lot of the things when I do my presentations, I tell teachers, you know, you can, with a with an internet connection and a projector, you can do so much. For example, the Library of Congress has high resolution images from various battles and whatnot um, that they can 
you can take those pictures, like of the Battle of Gettysburg, of the dead bodies, if you will, laying on the, in the rosewoods at the Battle of Gettysburg. You can take those images and blow them up to extreme magnification and start looking around and start asking your kids questions. So it doesn't require a lot of technology skills. Um, you can use Google Earth you know, to, to compute how far the distances soldiers would have traveled and things like that. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. The, um, you, can, you can find photos with flickers and, and different things. So if on the left hand side of my, of my wiki, down at the bottom there's a presentation for PTNC or NECC, either one will work. This gives you the links on how to do some of these things. Like you can find photos with Flickr um, if you log into Flickr and you do a search for a tag, like Civil War or whatnot, it'll tell, it'll bring them all to you. So you can bring those photos directly into your classroom. So you talk about it being blocked. It becomes it becomes um, a way to have those those photos come into your classroom in a safe manner because they come into you via RSS. So it's not so much that the students are going out to Flickr.com, it's the, you know the RSS feed brings them right to you. So I'm able to find photos all the time, of sometimes by expert photographers, and lets them do it. Um, and again, you can do the same thing with Delicious or Digo. And using RSS feeds, it lets those resources come to you. So teachers always tell me they don't have time to go out and find resources, and I'm saying um, use the power and, and harness RSS to find those resources for you. So again, if you go to Delicious and search for a tag of Gettysburg, Civil War, Antietam, whatever your favorite battle is or whatever you're covering, you can have those resources come directly into your classroom. Um, it's very easy to do that. And again, you know, I have the selected photographs of the Civil War link up on my, on my website, or up on this wiki here. Um, Using Google Earth, there's lots of uh, KMZ files that have been created, you know, from Abraham Lincoln to to different battles and 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 whatnot. Those are all available that you can put in. Um, I saw some people who do um, they do Facebook fake fake Facebook or MySpace pages with historical figures. I thought that was a really cool idea that you can you know create a Word doc with the um, different you know, carry, you know, with a with a template of a Facebook page or a MySpace page, and then it would just you know let the kids create their own historical figures. Um, you can uh, uh, the statistic stuff. You know, how many soldiers died in a particular battle or a particular day? Um, you know, what percentage of soldiers were from your state that fought in the Civil War based on the overall? The, all those statistics are available out there on the website or on the internet, so you can. Um, get that information and then just very simply put it in there or put it into a spreadsheet and let kids use, you know, manipulate the Excel spreadsheet. So, um, to do that. So, it's it's very easy. Um, you know, Google has a timeline feature that you can do view timeline and do um, different things. Um, YouTube and TeacherTube. Now, Civil War Sally has uh, several videos out there on uh, TeacherTube now. But you can, you know, view um, presentations by licensed battlefield guides at Gettysburg uh, on teacher to, or on YouTube. There are subject matter experts giving talks. There's a gentleman who does a really good talk on General Meade after the Battle of Gettysburg. That's available on TeacherTube. Um, you can get uh, listen to authentic music by Camp Chase Fifes and Drums, which is one of the one of the premier fife and Civil War fife and drum groups in the country. Uh, you can watch videos of them and show them and ask kids who may play the drums or may play the, f the if you have students in your classroom that play the flute, say what's the difference between a flute and a fife? Um, you know, notice how the drummers are drumming differently than your students may be able to do it. So um, if you type kick YouTube in front of the URL, it will download the video for you. Cool. I didn't know that. Um, you know, and there's other resources like the Pennsylvania Ar uh, State Archives has all of their civil war has all the PA Civil War flags online. Um, Harper's Weekly has um, all the newspapers, so there's a good one, you know, like why did it take three weeks for information related to the Battle of Gettysburg to get online and be available to teachers? Or um, why did it, um, you know, you can read, and even now you can see life um, photos from Life Magazine on Google Images. You can do um, 
you can read um, articles from other newspapers. Like you can read how Clara Barton actually put up uh, missing soldiers uh, lists of missing soldiers in the um, in their presentation. Um, yeah, Discovery Education has a lot of ed editable video that you can incorporate into your thing. Thinkfinity.org has a lot of free resources available to the Civil War. Um, so, you know, it's very it's very easy to integrate these technologies. And every one of these items right here listed on this doesn't take um, it doesn't. It doesn't take any, you know, any high-speed technology, a lot of technology to do. It's very simple, very easy, simple integration techniques to get kids to start using um, technology. And if you want some other examples, teach the, if I can type it right. Okay, I'm giving great ideas, thanks. Um, you know, I, I also run a blog where I post regularly. Uh, and again, Sarah, if you look over on the left-hand side, um, you know, of my top couple of posts, you know, Sarah wrote the one on Mary Todd Lincoln. Clara Barton. She wrote the one on Clara Barton and using poetry. So, the, you know, the point becomes is that, like, she had to write an acro a, a, a acrostic poem. So, you know, when people do acrostic poems searches on Google now, they come up with the Sarah's acrostic poem on my thing. So it's really a nice way to teach them how to do it. So, um, and I share resources with other people. I, and occasionally I'll do, um, you know, contests and book giveaways and things like that. So just another resource uh, for you to, to be able to, to do anything, to, to, um, to do stuff with. I wanted to see if anybody had any, any questions here at the end, toward the end of the presentation. If you have a question that you'd like to ask that hasn't been addressed, um, you can type your question in the chat or you can click on the hand with the green arrow and we can give you the microphone to ask your question directly to uh, Sarah and her, or her dad. And Sarah, you want to post your Twitter address? Um, on Twitter, I am um, I'm Pfeiffer1863. I'll type it in here. I'm on Twitter. I am um, Twitter dot com slash f i f e r one eight six three and Sarah and um, Peggy has put in Civil War Sally. Um, I play I play a Civil War era fife, and eighteen sixty three is the um, Battle of Gettysburg. <laughs> um, oh, they would like, here. I'm turning over to you. She'd like to know what books you like to read. I like to read like. Right now, I'm reading the Percy Jackson series, and if I have any other time, I read like the Warriors series, and those are really good. And are there any a other question was asked: What obstacles that you faced, and how did you overcome them? My, my biggest obstacle has been has been teachers. I think it's so hard to integrate technology. It, and it's, it's not that they don't know how to do it, but it's like, oh, I don't have any time, it costs too much money, and, and you know, I don't have the technology. You know, and I show them, and I say, do you have an internet accessible computer in your classroom? And they all say yes. You know, do you have access to a projector? Yes, and you can integrate technology in your classroom. It's that simple. Um, and, you know, when I show them that, oh, I don't have time to go look for websites. Well, I can say, A, go to teachthecivilwar.wikispaces.com, you know, and it'll, it'll take you to the link. Or I can say, look, here's the power of RSS. Let me show you how to harness the power of RSS. Oh, wait, you're not just teaching about the Civil War. Let's change the RSS feed to uh, Paul Revere in Boston and, the, and um, the American Revolution or whatever you want to do. So you can change the search feed and get the information that you want. So you don't have to go look for those resources. You let them come to you. Um, you know, it's, it's so easy to do these, these, these little things and integrate technology. Yeah, I like the I like the Percy Jackson books. I'm actually starting the second one. Sarah kind of got me turned on to them too. I can't wait for the movie to come out. I'm a big Harry Potter fan too. So yes, 
Yeah, Peggy wants to know. Yes, you can do it in all subjects. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, and um, we're so glad that you and your dad have joined us. I'm going to go ahead and officially wrap up the show, but everybody is uh, welcome to stick around, and we can continue to ask questions of Sarah if she has time. Um, Yes, they do let me share it at school. What happened? And our next show on January 23rd will feature me web conferencing to connect classrooms internationally um, as well as in the U.S. And I will be this very special guest. And on Tuesday, January 19th, as part of the um, Future of Education series, Steve Harganon will be interviewing, um, I, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the person's name, probably Yang Zhao, on Catching Up or Leading the Way, and that will be at 5 p.m. Pacific or 8 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, as part of the Q series, David Edburn, on What Every Teacher Should Know About Assistive Technology. Steve will be interviewing uh, him at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. So you'll want to join Steve for those sessions. And then on Thursday, on January 21st, Mark Barrow and on the Dumbest Generation, um, Steve will be interviewing him at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. That will be an interesting one. And on our survey that will automatically open at the end of the session, we hope that you'll give us feedback on um, today's session as well as uh, sessions that you'd like to hear about and learn about in the future. And we also offer professional development certificates. So please put your name and your email address. And Peggy will make sure that you get your professional development certificate. She created the certificate. And it's just fantastic that we are able to offer that now. And we want to give a very special thanks to Civil War Sally and Sarah and her dad for joining us today, as well as to Steve Hargadon who is the founder of Classroom 2.0 and Future of Education and Conversations and several other mean communities. And thank you to each of you who participated in today's session, as well as Illuminate and Learn Center for providing this forum for us to meet each and every week at the same time. So now I'm going to pass it back to Civil War Sally, Sarah, and her dad, so that they, and if you have questions that you would like to ask, Please feel free to type them in the chat or click on the hand with the mic, with the green arrow on me. And we can give you the mic to ask your question directly to them. And you put your information, McTeach, in the, the survey with your name and your email address. You can also, OK, there you go. There's Peggy's email address that you can um, email her directly. If for some reason, sometimes the survey link doesn't always show up. So um, that may be another reason. And Jim has put in his email as well as um, so that you can contact them. Thank you for and then, letting me present. Oh having me here. All You're the welcome. Nice comments. Yes, and we're so glad that you joined us. It's very exciting. Um, I know you were a bit nervous, but you did a fantastic job in sharing your passion. And um, what, what are some of the things that you share with, with other kids to encourage them to do these same things with their teachers? 
Find something you're passionate about and have fun with it. We can create like a blog and a wiki and communicate with students all around the world. Those are great, great ideas. Um, how how have your teachers received the way with the the projects that you do? How have they um, received your work? They do it like my school right now is very good with it. They're gonna they help a lot and like they're very they have a lot of technology so. And they're they supportive of, yeah. of you. Um, like you said, you mentioned you left class to go do a Skype conference. Uh, they they really didn't mind that because it would only take it only took uh, not that long, and it promotes the school. Definitely, definitely. Are there any other questions that you might have for Sarah? We visit the battle like when it's really like during the summertime and spring. We visit it like every weekend. We do monument cleanup and a bunch of other stuff. One of the cool things I like to do um, is we um, we take your iPod Touch. Yeah, we take my my iPod Touch and and put photographs, original photographs on it, and then we'll walk around the battlefield and try to find those same locations. So it's really a cool way to 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 do it, and and you know, get my kids engaged in the Civil War very quickly and very easily. Kind of like geocaching. Yeah, kind of like geocaching with primary source photos. Okay, that's that's interesting. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun. It, it's um, you know, to, to let my kids stay in the same locations that you know that you know, where dead bodies were, or where you know pictures, or where the photographer was. It's the kids love it. Have we? No. We have not visited Camp William Penn. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Vicksburg. Have we? I forget. We were close to Vicksburg, but we haven't been to it yet. We don't tie genealogy with this, but we could. Yes, you definitely could in the ancestries. Yeah, there are there are sites where you can look up, you know, Civil War soldiers. So you could follow a soldier around if you found out what unit they were in. Yeah, and that, it wouldn't have to be specific to the to the Civil War. It could be, you know, Revolutionary War or you know whatever. Yeah, and if you look at some of the Follow Me projects, um, the, you know, Peggy, you mentioned extensions. You know, it can be again anything in your community. You know, maybe your community is famous for something that you want to follow around or. Um, my son's going to reveal one. Uh, my younger son's going to reveal one here at the Keaton C conference coming up in, in February. It's specific to something, you know. It's, so it's you can do it any way you want, you know. Or it's just a generic Web 2.0 classroom, you know. If you have a large district or you want to do it in your state or whatever you want to do. Um. Like. You, Deb, you have your great grandfather's Civil War Bible. Well, everything that is from 
our family is kind of in a museum because ours was related to General McClellan. And that was a great suggestion that Carol Teach had about everybody um, visiting those sites, taking pictures, and then sending them to Civil War Sally so that she would have additional resources to post um, with in Flickr or where any of her projects so that they'd be copyright free. I think that's a great way of doing that and sharing um, resources amongst us as well to really expand those primary sources. Yeah, there's a, is it on yours or mine? I don't know whose blog it's on. One of our blogs is that we, um, we actually did a CSI Gettysburg. Oh, it's on mine. It's on yours? And we did it one time and, you know, had the kids sitting. Me. You know, had Sarah and Sally sitting in the same position that some of uh, Matthew Brady's uh, assistants were sitting in Gettysburg at the same position, so it's just so cool that you know the kids can sit there, use original primary sources. We found them with, again, put them on my iPod Touch and use some uh, general knowledge of the battle and where pictures were taken, and just um, and took that information and found that same exact location. The kids were just all over it. Yes, I saw that blog when she's sitting there with uh, Civil War Sally. I think that I was really intrigued by the the images and the places that Civil War Sally had been by reading Sarah's blog. I, I just think that's fantastic. I'm not a history buff. I haven't been, but I'm really um, inspired and, and really interested in, by the things that you've shared today? Like, somebody asked what kids are. They, um, they did do history and, no, like, they would have games and they would help their mom around the house. And, like, I forgot to say this in my presentation, but when you get Sal and you blog, you have um, it's like what we have in there is that you have to blog in Sally's point of view. <laughs> um, we have like we go to like some our stores and we actually buy games from there. Like, what's that big hard ball? Okay, that's cool. Like the cup and ball. Pick up six. Jackstraws, dominoes, and a bunch of other games. And you mentioned the blog post writing in the viewpoint of Civil War Sally, I can definitely see lot, the potential for lots of activities in language arts, um, talking about viewpoint and characters and char personification and all of those uh, literary elements, that um, great lessons and activities that this project and similar projects could foster. Yeah, another another cool thing is even have them read some first person, you know, diary accounts or you know, let them read a letter or two which are easily available online and say, you know, why did they write that way? You know, why did they use that language? You know, um, you know, if you read um David Will's letter to President Lincoln inviting him to Gettysburg, you know, where he says that, you know, we're having something on you know, on a date present. And you know, it's like, why did he say present that way, or why did he write that way? And if you or if you had to rewrite the Gettysburg Address, how would you rewrite it? That sort of thing. And so it's, um, I thought the there was, there was something going around not too long ago. You know, that um, Lincoln had to do the the Gettysburg Address as as a Twitter post. You know, how long would it take him to do that, or whatever? Or if he had to do the 
there's also another one out there that's really popular is the, the Gettysburg Address as a PowerPoint presentation. So, you know, how do we how do we do that? You know, those are just cute little things to do with kids depending on their age. You can also um I don't know the URL but when we had Sally home for like Christmas vacation, we recorded a couple art snacks and I think a bunch of them were up with on artsnacks.com. And we have a bunch of teacher tube videos. So if you want to learn like about Lincoln, I have a like a whole art snack about him. And if you if I didn't say enough about Sally, you can go to Art Snacks also. I have to have a video about Sally. Have you, um, Sarah, have you uploaded any of the videos you've created to uh, SchoolTube or to uh, the VidSnax name? Um, we lo we uploaded a few to to TeacherTube. She does have a TeacherTube account, and um, Kevin Honeycutt did reach out to her and ask her to do some art snacks. So we're working on those um, again. To those are more like a one I don't want to say one minute, but maybe two minute um, a two minute video on just about a particular topic, be it Clara Barton or Ford Theater or about Civil War Sally. So. Um, Deb, you know, it's funny that you mentioned the Gettysburg Rap Address. Yes. Uh, I actually, I think it was yesterday, the day before, I, I was Googling something and I saw that someone actually did a Civil War rap to teach about the Civil War. And it was like, it was really well done. I mean, I had to buy the whole song, but I didn't. I got to listen to like 30 seconds of it or something, but it was it was really interesting. Uh, just to get kids to be creative again. So if you have kids that you start talking about Gardner's multiple intelligences, if you have kids who want to do it, yeah, yeah, you're getting feedback. The um, if you get kids who are um, you know interested in music or whatnot and want to create something, it's really easy to have them redo it. And the vid snacks name that I just posted the link to um, talks about all the different ways and ideas for students creating videos as well. So you might want to check those out and add to that name site as well. Uh, we will definitely, I was not aware of that one, so we'll definitely check that one out. It's for, um, it says where kids and teachers can learn how to make videos. So. Um, just another neat community to explore. Are there any other questions that you have for um, Sarah or her dad before we let them go? This has been a fantastic time with lots of ideas. And what's up next for you, Sarah? Uh, the next I'm presenting the next presentation I'm doing is a Pitency at Hershey. And then it's the Middle States Council Studies and then Peter Fair and a bunch of other presentations. I'm doing a, I know for I'm doing a poster session back again. Um, there is like there's no computer fair at the school, but it's um, at, at cap it's at our capital area IU15. That's where we go. It sounds like you're going to be very busy, and I see great things for your future, Sarah. Do, um, what do you think that you're going to do after you go to college? 
Um, like, I think I may become a teacher, or, or something else. <laughs> I figured you might follow those lines. A journalist, yeah, a photojournalist or a journalist would be a good idea. Or a children's book author. All of those would be fantastic. You'd be a good fit. Well, we thank you and everybody who's joined us today so much for your time. Um, and join us next week for uh, a discussion about web conferencing activities and ways to use web conferencing in the classroom. And we hope that you'll join us at the same time. And all of the recording links will be posted to our website later this weekend at live.classroom20.com. And please fill out uh, the survey when the survey opens up after you exit the session. Yes, you just close the, the Illuminate session and then um, the, the survey will open. And you, Deb, you can um, email civilwarsally at gmail.com just to make sure about um, Sally's visit in Atlanta. Um, I want to say thank you again. It was really fun presenting here and an opportunity for Sally to be signed up, to get signed up with like more classrooms. Well, we're so glad that you joined us and you did a fantastic job and really shared some fan awesome information. And I hope that there are other students out there who will um, be inspired to create similar projects as well and teachers for use with students. I'm a Carol Teach. I am 12 years old and I've been doing this. I've been doing Civil War Sally for a little bit over a year, but I've presenting, been presenting a lot longer. I've been doing it since like third, no, fourth, fourth grade. That's great for you've been doing this a couple of years. I think that's excellent experience. And we thank you for sharing with us today. And what did you start out um, presenting before the Civil War Sally project? They wanted to know what you started to pre present with. Um, she was starting to walk away. We got to get ready for oh. a basketball game. Okay, the, sorry. Um, no, that's all right. She, she, I started doing. Claire Barton. Yeah, she started with Clara Barton, and then. Um, in her classroom, and then we, she and I would do presentations together on just, again, using technology in the social studies, using technology to teach the Civil War, that sort of thing. So, um, like in her classroom, she had to do an autobiography, and, you know, it was so easy for her to do a presentation on um, Clara Barton using PowerPoint, that sort of thing. Actually, my first presentation was the Civil War Preservation Trust because my I got published in one of their books, so they had to give me credit, not my dad. And I thought it was actually really fun having my first presentation there. And then from there on, I was presenting that with my, I, and then I would always help my dad. And now, when we present, I do either Clara Barton or or Civil War Sally. If you're not, Deb, if you're not familiar with the Civil War Preservation Trust, they run an annual teacher, free teachers institute. Um, oh, I want to say late July every year. If you go to civilwar.org, they've got well, a lot of free lesson and plans, curriculum. I'm so proud of you, and I stuff like that. So. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us again. 
we'll let everybody go, and good luck in the basketball game, Sarah. Take care, everybody, and watch for the recordings to be posted later this weekend. Have a great day or evening, um, and we'll see you next Saturday.